Hello and welcome to Not The Dragon Shed for another um, Soap of the Month. Now this one is for November and I'm calling it Carrot Cake because that's kind of where I'm going with it. Um, this is a um, Castile style soap. I found online they're normally called Bastille but they're illegitimate Castile. So for my liquid this time I've got some buttermilk and this has just been frozen hence the crunchy now I normally advocate adding extra liquid to a lot of my soaps but not this one um, I've tried this batch before and I added an extra third of liquid and it made a complete mess so <laughs> if you're going to make this one stick to the recipe I actually got this recipe off of, um, I think it was Soap Queen, um, Katie Carson at the Royalty Soaps actually um, used a version of this to do a similar recipe. So uh, she got the original recipe from Soap Queen, I think. But anyway, I'll, I'll put the um, recipe up on the website, on my blog. making this soap on an unusual day for me. I normally do soaps during the daytime in the week but today is Friday and it's about half past eight so definitely not my normal time for soap making. So um, as with my milk soap recipe start with your frozen milk. Um, for this recipe um, Katie Carson used um, coconut milk um, but she wanted some without stabiliser in, without goo -ar in it. And I've looked everywhere and I can't find it. So I've stuck with the buttermilk, which means this isn't a vegan recipe, but it is a soft, baby friendly one. So I'm just going to gradually add my lye to my buttermilk. Should have gone with a bigger jug. Never mind. So this ice is going to break down and melt once the lye comes into contact with it. And you're doing it from frozen like this so you don't cook the milk. I have said that before a couple of times. But just to remind people, you can just stick your lye directly into the milk. Um, but that kind of curdles makes it go a bit funny, which you actually can use in your soap like that but you need to really, really blend it out. And I'm not sure how fast this one's going to, to go, so I don't want to risk accelerating by over blending, because I'm trying to do something a little bit more complicated than I normally do. So just adding the lye in about, I don't know, five or six additions. And you can see it's all, no, you can't see from the angle, honest it is starting to well it's pretty much halfway gone and because it's milk you can't see if everything's dissolved so I'm kind of going by trust here and by feel if I can't feel any grainy bits at the bottom then the lye is pretty much dissolved or we can just keep stirring much just got back from <laughs> from work as well hence why I mean fairly smart clothes which is probably a bad idea for making soap. Oh well. Last bit. So I'm just going to mix this last bit in until all the ice has gone essentially. You can put some ice in your water bath, 
keep it cooler. Um, that might be a, a benefit if you're using something like whole milk or even cream because that can really thicken up if it cooks too much. This is going to heat to some degree but using it frozen and using a water bath certainly reduces that. Yes, I should be wearing gloves <laughs> and an apron and eye protection. But do as I say, not as I do. Right, so I'm gonna push that to one side because that's pretty much there. And it's in 37-ish. Okay, so now my oils. So here I've got some, it's actually extra virgin olive oil, which is why it is this luminous green. I think I'll move you in a little closer so you can get a better, better view of what's going on. So we have luminous green oil, um, olive oil and a little bit of coconut. Now this stabilizes the oil slightly and means that your Castile style soap sets a little faster or um, cures a little faster and stays slightly softer as if you do all um, olive oil you can end up with something you have to wait six or eight months for that will be rock hard <laughs> to use so this is the other option right i'm going to keep that to one side because i don't need that and now i'm going to add some of my colorings and things now this is a carrot cake so actually no i can't do this yet can I? <laughs> can't do that because i need to separate it off once it's, once it's mixed oops okay so i'll do that in a minute what I also need to tell you is you need to buy some baby food. Now, this recipe calls for 70 grams of pureed baby food, and that's exactly what you get in one of these little pouches. Um, I was intending to make this one a pumpkin spice um, soap, but I couldn't find pureed pumpkin on its own. And the last batch I actually tried and made it myself, and it was just too watery, and it just went, Bleh. it died on me, so. But, okay, I think, just to be somewhat sensible, why well, start now really? I'm going to stick some blood on, some protection for this next bit. I don't think I'm going to need them, but you never know. So my fragrance here, I've actually got in two little pots, and this is pumpkin spice, because I couldn't find a carrot cake one. <laughs> so it's pretty much the same sort of spice anyway, spice level. So that's my oils. Take you out for now. Double check the temperature of that 30 ish. Come on. 30 something, you can't make up its mind. 37, I'll say on that. And this is at 24. Okay, so I'll leave that to one side for a bit and stir this out a little more. Might even nuke that big bowl, that might be an idea. There's a lot of heat still coming out. This lie, you can, you can see it. From this angle, maybe. See I've got a little bit of curdling on the buttermilk, which kind of happens anyway. Not as bad as it would be if I'd gone with it straight from the fridge. This is still reacting slightly. So, 
be low on fragrance. So something to remember, cleaning up oils, don't use a wet cloth. Use kitchen roll, kitchen paper to get up the majority of it. So if you just use water, it's just going to spread it around everywhere. That's going the other way. Twenty six, twenty seven, thirty five, thirty two, thirty one. Can't make up its mind in a minute. Thirty-three-ish, twenty-five, and rising. I think there we go. I'm within about eight. I don't have all night, so that's probably not the right attitude. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of extra oil in here. going to take my light out of the bath and just dry it off. I don't want to add any extra water to this. Okay. A quick stir. Let's make sure there's nothing left that's not dissolved. Whiz this until it just comes together, moving the fragrance oil out of the way again. Trace, I think I'm, I'm just just beyond demossification. So, that's it in there. So now I'm going to take off these gloves because my hands are just sweaty, sweaty. Right into this part, I'm going to add my <laughs> carrot puree. bit of colour, probably not very much, so I'm also going to mix in some brown shades, so a wee bit of bronze, a wee bit of brown, not that much, there. 
washer. You need a little clumsy today. And a wee bit of coffee. It's a slightly warmer kind of brown. Okay. And because it's a carrot cake, I'm going to put in a good spoon of ground cinnamon. I'm not going to add much in the way of scent, but cinnamon is generally good for your skin anyway. So, uh, it's about to chill off here. Quick scrapey round. Start that off. You kind of see the carrot coming up slightly. powders down. I'm have a good sweep around, get all the excess powders off the side. Should be a bit more carrot cakey, at least that's the plan. Now I'm going to put my remaining fragrance oil in. I'm completely out of this fragrance, so hopefully that will have enough oomph in it. These two, and then that one. And I'm only going to fill about two thirds in the little ones. filling my big one. I could just tip up the whole bowl and do it that way but I prefer to start with a bit of control. That certainly helps the liner here to sit back into place. At least that's the plan. Now I've adopted this um, Swiss roll tin as my carrying tray for these because it is the only thing we have that has a flat bottom that doesn't buckle when it gets hot. So our baking sheet is a very definite buckle and all of my trays are very slight concave to them. So this way it hopefully keeps everything relatively level. a bit more controlled. Okay, I think I can now switch to just tipping up to that stage. I think I've said before, if you're going to get into soap making, invest in some silicon spatulas. You can get pretty much everything 
out the bowl. So that's my first layer. Quick shake just to level them out. And I'm going to work on the topping. Now, um, Katie Carson does a lot of um, frosting on hers. And I'm, I'm kind of going that way, this. But what I've got here is some kaolin clay. And this you use for face masks and for soaps and things. It's great for sorting out greasy skin and that kind of thing. So I'm going to add a quantity, not being too particular about it. That should lighten this up somewhat. This soap is going to have kind of a greenish tinge to it anyway because it's um, virgin oil. Hopefully this will take that down a little bit. So. <laughs> a bit of white mica just to give it that slight touch of lightness. So yeah the shed has become a dumping ground so any project that was halfway started has just ended up stuffed down here. So yeah that's not great. So yeah, <laughs> um, this is definitely going to be a November report rather than an October one. Um, I'm hoping that in this week, which is actually half term for me, um, I'll be able to get all my planning done for at least the first couple of weeks so that I won't then have to be planning for the next day constantly because that's not the way to do it really. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I've decided to spend at least today um, probably tomorrow um, cleaning the shed and that's going to be my, my me time so I've got some nice heavy rock music to play and a lot of bin bags <laughs> and I've actually got to do a bit of a cull in terms of the projects I've got started here and the projects I intended to start so yeah I need to kind of look at this with a more realistic eye as to what time I'm going to have so yeah I've still got plenty of videos backed up that I did over the summer so I should still be able to do at least two a month. Um, still hoping for four but eh, it might not happen. So yeah, <laughs> I'm going to turn on some rock and I'm going to get tidy. Might be here sometime.